FEVE fluoropolymer top coats are basically um, a fluorinated polyurethane type system. So they have all the advantages of the polyurethane bond, the flexibility combined with toughness and durability, but the fluorinated portion actually allows you to have a coating that lasts in exterior environment, environments and withstands UV degradation for many, many years, if not decades. Because of their chemistry, they allow, um, they're allowed to be used in exterior environments where you don't need ovens to cure them. And that allows them to be used on existing bridges for recoding um, in the field, but also in new construction or new bridge applications as well. And this allows for ease of application, um, also low maintenance over time, and of course, very good durability and longevity. FEVE fluoropolymer top coats have actually been used in Japan for the last 35 years. The materials were um, designed and implemented in Japan initially in the um, early to mid 80s and over time they were recognized as being a superior top coat system that has a lot of advantages in the use of uh, bridge coatings and so most bridges in Japan have actually been coated with this technology so there are bridges there that are 35 years old and show excellent color and gloss retention. They're gaining acceptance uh, across the globe and so there are some bridges in the United States that are painted with this technology. Um, we don't have the, the decades long exposure yet um, but they do have that um, exposure in those case studies in Japan. Of course, the idea of having a coating that lasts a long time can give you a lot of benefits. So the first benefit, obviously, is the value of the coating system over time. So as we all know, whenever we're recoating a bridge, you have to assess any corrosion that's taken place and you may have to blast. And depending on what level of blast you have to do, um, that can become very costly, not just labor costs, but also um, costs for containment and, of course, the environmental impact as well. So there is a, a value when it comes to life cycle over time. Uh, there's also a value in that these coatings degrade so minimally over time that they actually do a great job in um, ma you know, maintaining their appearance over time and not collecting lots of dirt and of course resisting corrosion. So when you think about the maintenance of these coatings, you're doing much less touch up, much less um, corrosion, uh, you know, touch up as well. And of course with cleaning, you know, if it was on an architectural structure, for example, you could just in a lot of cases do a simple water wash and you wouldn't have to do a high pressure wash with cleaning agents. So there are a lot of advantages of having a coating that can last a long time that actually then make the value of that coating over its life actually less costly um, that's of conventional coating systems. And we've done some, some you know, running of numbers on that to see an actual dollar per square foot, for example. And of course we can discuss that information. So with any fluorinated uh, polymer, you're gonna have very, very high durability. When it comes to organic coating systems, we have what we would call our conventional systems, which are traditional polyurethanes, polysiloxanes, acrylic technology, polyester technology. When we get into the fluoropolymer space, that's where we really start seeing um, the advantage of having that carbon fluorine bond. That's really the foundation of the performance. That carbon fluorine bond is resistant to photochemical degradation, which is essentially degradation from sunlight. And what that translates into is color and gloss retention that is essentially unchanged for decades. So if you have a red bridge and it's shiny, it's gonna look shiny, and it's still gonna be that initial color of red that you put in place for a very long time. What you'll see with conventional systems, uh, say a polyurethane, is after about five years, that red starts fading. Um, with some even less performing systems like polyester, that red could actually turn pink. Um, and also, what you also see is with gloss. You'll see something, if it's very high gloss and shiny and reflective, over time it becomes dull. 
which can also impact the color and the appearance of the color. Another key point though, is that fluorinated coating systems are really good barriers. They resist water um, and they also can then resist degradation. So that allows them to be very good at protecting against corrosion. And so um, these materials have kind of a dual function on a steel structure like a bridge in that they weather very well, they maintain the appearance over decades, but they also allow for that corrosion protection over that same time as well. The ability of a fluorinated system to resist degradation means that the coating system has integrity for a longer period of time. And what integrity really means is that the coating isn't breaking down. And it's very simple. When a coating starts breaking down, you start getting micro cracking, you get voids and pores, and all those things allow for infiltration of the materials that actually cause corrosion, salt and water. And so if you have a coating system that resists that kind of breakdown, down, you're going to have a better barrier for a longer period of time, which is going to give you better corrosion resistance. The other thing to keep in mind is that fluorinated polymers are very water resistant. So they initially have excellent resistance to moisture intrusion. And again, moisture intrusion is key um, in corrosion. So that's kind of one of the ways that these systems can actually be a benefit compared to conventional polyurethane and polysiloxane systems. Uh, the way that you test for that traditionally is you do a chamber test like a salt fog or a prohesion test where you actually put panels into a uh, chamber and then you incorporate a salt air fog type um, exposure and you see the corrosion effects over time. There's a analytical method that we've been looking at called electrical impedance spectroscopy and it's a way to better quantify that uh, ability of a coating system to be a barrier. And the way that it's run is pretty simple. You put basically a current through a coating system and you see how that current changes over time. And what the coating initially will do, it'll resist the current going through it. Um, organic coatings are more insulative than conductive. But as that coating breaks down, then you again have those voids and that pathway for moisture and salt intrusion. And so once that happens, then you can have conductivity. So your impedance will actually go down. Uh, with FEVE systems, we found that that impedance remains very steady over time because again, it's resisting degradation. And so EIS is a way that we're also trying to complement the traditional salt fog and prohesion tests to better quantify how these coating systems will perform against corrosion. Currently in the United States, we have kind of a unique market in that we, we don't have a national standard for coding systems. We obviously have uh, federal highway standards for how to construct roads and bridges in a safe way. But when it comes to the actual finish used on those structures, there's no national standard for performance. And so each individual state or DOT can come up with their own standards. Usually they use what's called a QPL, Qualified Product List. Um, some states have kind of adopted what's called NTPEP, we call it NEPPEP, um, as part of an organization called NEPCOAT, which is a collection of the Northeastern states. They've set standards for both steel and concrete structures, uh, namely bridges. And so those states, instead of actually having a, their own QPL, they would say to refer to NTPEP. Um, so that is kind of how the, the landscape is uh, currently for coding finishes. So when it comes to a specification, you really have to work directly with the DOT and you either have to have a coding system that is on their approved QPL or that is on the NTPEP standard, or the DOT obviously can do a special provision for a unique coding system. And so right now what's happening in some states where they don't actually have an FEVE coding on their standards, they're actually incorporating into the spec the use of uh, FEVE type coatings in test patches for testing. Um, but again, there are bridges in the U.S. that are coated with these materials. And what was, you know, what was done there is the spec called out for an FEVE floor polymer coating system. So every DOT has the latitude and the authority to choose the type of finish that they, they want.
So the FEVE chemistry itself, that's the fluoroethylene vinyl ether polymer, is just the polymer. And that polymer can be available in different forms. It can be available in solvent, organic solvents. Um, it could also be available in water, and it can also be available in a solid form, and we call it a flake grade. And each of those materials can be used to make different types of coating systems. The solvent-based systems are not going to achieve low VOC requirements. And of course, some states have different VOC requirements than others. So the way currently you can achieve those low VOC requirements is by either utilizing the flake grades and dissolving those grades in what are called exempt solvents. And right now, Oxol is commonly used. That's a trade name uh, for a solvent. There's also um, some other solvents like acetone, methyl acetate. Um, those are considered non-VOC solvents. Um, of course, there is a direction with the EPA and some of the, the different states, namely California, that have looked into the health effects of some of these exempt solvents and they found that they may be more toxic than previously thought. So while they're not um, contributing to ozone depletion, they're contributing to negative health effects. And so they're looking at removing some of those from the exemption list. And so one of the other ways that you can achieve an environmentally friendly or low VOC coating is by using a water-based system. And so these are resins, FEVE resins that are in a water matrix. Um, but also, you know, there is a trend uh, where there's a lot of new bridge construction or even maintenance and repair where they're taking part of that bridge and putting it into a job shop. And depending on that type of shop, if it has the ability to electrostatic spray powder coatings, powder coatings could even be an option uh, for bridge coatings. And those are also considered very environmentally friendly as they don't use any organic solvents at all. Um, so there are different ways of using FEVE fluoropolymer technology to achieve environmentally friendly coating systems.